shut my eyes. Or I will. I will. Thank I you. will too. Thank you. Okay, okay. Ron. I'd like to call to order the Avalon City Council meeting of Tuesday, July 2nd. If we would please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Place your hand over your heart and begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'll spare you an invocation today, but I would, on behalf of the city of Avalon, we'd like to wish you all a very happy and safe 4th of July. And Dan's going to be running down. We, you know, we've got a lot going on on the 4th, and we've had a lot, busy couple of days just in preparation. So um, please enjoy the 4th. Please be seated. Be safe. And if we could please have the roll call, roll call Gabby. Councilmember Olson. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Casti. Here. Mayor Marshall. Here. And I'd like to read into the record that Councilmember Hernandez is not in attendance. Thank you. Okay. City Manager. Oh, yeah, thank you. Take a picture. Take a picture. Oh. So you're raising your Welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome aboard. Hi. Okay. Get your mic ready and all right. Okay, Denise. I just have a couple of announcements, and the first one would just be to remind the public that City Hall will be closed on July 4th, this Thursday. And I wanted to thank all of the city staff that works on 4th of July for all their efforts. And I know you all know that after that parade, it's amazing within an hour and a half, two hours, it, it's swept up and put away. They do a great job. So thank you to Public Works. Yes. I have no written communication either. Okay, but we have a presentation. Are we going to do that at the moment of the contract or not? No. Sorry, Annie. Oh, that's right. okay. Okay. We do have two representatives here from LA County Sheriffs. They were. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably still in the meeting. You want to start with the department head? Uh, sure. Who there? Bob Greenlaw is jumping up. Hey. <laughs> Thank you. 
also a good issue. Uh, mole phase one, um, Metro gave the green light to award the construction contract, so we're all um, full ahead on that. Uh, contracts are being processed with the contractor, and the contracts anticipated to be fully executed by mid-July, and the contractor's ready to mobilize in my discussions with him. Um, Pebbly Beach Road lift station, the contracts are being processed with the contractor, and the, it's in the same status as uh, the mole phase one mid-July and the contractors already making advance preparations to mobilize. Um, the ADA ramps, the project is complete with the exception of the truncated dome, so those those yellow yellow bumps that we put on there and that's for uh, visually impaired users, that's why those are put on there if anybody's asking. And then also the guard fences on those three ramps at the Sumner um, location there, there'll be some guard fences so people can't step off the edge of that curb. And those, I will go over a further description on, at the next council meeting once I can get some pictures there of why those were built in a certain way because I am getting some questions from the public on that. But I can, I can fully describe that with pictures better. Um, and uh, let's see, the Summer Beacon, Sumner Beacon intersection, the crosswalk bars have been installed and then the high vis bars are the other direction there to be installed as traffic permits and also the median as traffic permits. So you see us out there in the morning doing half at a time as traffic permits because it's pretty busy out there right now. But we'll keep on proceeding ahead until that gets done. And then the saltwater intake at the Catherine Booster Station. So Public Works and ES staff next week will perform investigative camera work on that intake pipe at the Catherine Booster Station, and that's what supplies all the salt, salt water for our community, and there's a leak in that pipe, and it's only evident when it's very low tide, and we lose uh, the prime on the pumps, and so we get pump alarms, and that causes a lot of extra cost for personnel to go actually go out there and get those pumps primed again. So we're gonna stick a camera down there, and then our fix is gonna be to line wherever that leak is, we think it's right at the seawall, um, to line that pipe uh, with a contractor. Any questions? Just on the uh, corner of Sumner and Beacon. Yes. I was talking with Jim the other day, and I, and I went to walk off, and I twisted my ankle because you've got those two at different elevations. Okay, and uh, there's some green barricades right now. Not on Sumner, I am sorry, okay. on Catalina and Beacon. And Catalina, yeah, okay. and we're also gonna put a fence at that one radius, which is on the private property, and that yeah. is a typical ramp, but yes, we're gonna put a fence just, okay. so if we get bigger groups, that if they do walk off, they won't walk off that right. edge. Or even stripe it or something. With yeah, well, we can do that on. too, but yeah. really a guard, ra a guard fence. Okay that uh, is pleasing, you know, aesthetically pleasing. We, that's what we intend to place there, okay? okay? okay. Council questions? Good. All right, well, you know what, now that, um, JJ, I'm sorry to put you off, but if you wouldn't mind, and we'll have law enforcement uh, give their presentation. Thank you, sir. Captain Hawking, could you come up and introduce your guests? Hi, Captain John Hawking. And I would, uh, I brought a couple guests today, and I'll introduce them, that, introduce them in a second. But I wanted to point out one of the reasons I brought them over is, and give credit where credit's due. Uh, the department has a contract, we have 42 contract cities uh, in Los Angeles County. And contract law enforcement bureau on the mainland, they handle all of our contracts. In the first presentation that we gave to the city, there was an error in the Sheriff's Department's contract. Uh, basically, all 41 stations, they uh, charged uh, cities $277,000 for a deputy. 
that consists of insurance, like all the different things that requires for that deputy to work in their city. Catalina, they charge $253,000. So when they were putting together the Avalon contract, they inadvertently charged the city the 277 instead of the Catalina Island deputy. Give credit where credit was, is due. Carl Johnson from our community, he is the one that spotted that error and uh, it was immediately corrected. But with all that being said, I asked two of our contract law enforcement uh, deputies, uh, one's a captain and one's a lieutenant, to come over and just explain how the contract works. How, like who makes up the price for the deputy? Is it the sheriff can just make up any price he wants or can the captain? That's not how it works. So I asked them to come over and be able to. And Denise was uh, one that I dealt with also a lot that uh, we requested that they come over. So I'd like to introduce uh, Captain, if you want to say your name, Sergio. Yes, good afternoon, Captain Sergio Escobedo. I've been with Contract Law Enforcement Bureau for uh, two and a half weeks. So fair, <laughs> newly promoted. This is uh, my partner, Lieutenant uh, Matt Squire. He's been with the Bureau, Bureau what, five years? Seven years. Seven years. So I, um, I'd like to uh, thank the council for having us here, uh, Ms. Mayor. Thank you for your uh, hospitality on this island. This is a great uh, place. It's my second time visiting. I think I'm going to come back with my family. Yeah. It's a great <laughs> weather and great atmosphere here. But uh, as, as Captain Hawking was explaining, our bureau uh, manages $850 million in contracts uh, for LA County. We have eight sergeants that are project managers, they're contract managers. They manage 42 contract cities amongst other entities within the, the uh, LA County. Um, that, that rate of 250, I think it was 251, 251, 251,000. That rate is set by the auditor controller, and it's all based on salaries, benefits. There's a lot of factors, support, clerical admin. That's all factored by the auditor controller to come up with that number. The only reason why Catalina is different than contract cities, than regular uh, the other 41 contract cities at 277, is because, no pun intended, you're on your own island. It's, it's different here because it's less overhead to manage a station. Uh, on the on the island, so that number, the audit controller, based on his on his equations, come up with that 251. So that was the uh, the error made by our uh, our contract manager. He inadvertently uh, uh, populated a, a cell that created the 277, which is automatic. We have to go in there and manually change that. So it was just a clerical error that was missed, but it was corrected. Thank you for the community for uh, for catching that. It, it's uh, it's something that we manage. Our contract managers they manage our contracts daily. They look at it. They they manage it throughout the year, and they spot uh, they may spot uh, mistakes and they correct it. They work with the cities with the captains to ensure that we uh, provide a service and a contract that's fair and and uh, and adequate uh, to provide the uh, law enforcement services. Thank you. Sergio, could you also one more thing? Let's see, Sergio, if you could uh, talk about uh, if the city in the future wanted to add a deputy to better serve the community, how does that work? They don't get charged. Can you talk about the charging for a new deputy coming on? Yes, we have we have a program. It's it's a it's a growth a growth deputy. So a city has the option of um, of purchasing a growth deputy at a. Uh, Price of two hundred and eight thousand, so it's what about 40, 42,000, 43,000 less than a full rate deputy for for the island, and the growth deputy is is uh, is good for twelve to eighteen months, depending on where uh, throughout the, where in the year you decide to to purchase that item, and that growth deputy is is on its own. It's not used to supplement a vacancy or or, an, or another item that uh, you that you currently have, so it's it's not used to supplement that, that uh, a, a purchase already uh, that's in place. So that growth deputy will, will, uh, will be used for the 12 to 18 months. And after the year, after that period is done, then the city has the option of, it'll convert into a full rate deputy. So it'll be at 251 after the, uh, the period is done. And that translates into that growth into the city. So it's transitions from two, 208 to 251. 
And so the option is, is there uh, for the city to, to, uh, to purchase, if that's uh, an option that you, you decide on. Let me ask a question on that growth deputy. For some reason, it sounds to me like it would be a younger deputy. Is that somebody just get not necessarily, because the, because you know my concern. I, I, it appears that the most of the deputies that come here are getting very close to retirement. And with the exception of Adam, Adam, mm -hmm. um, I mean, we, yeah. want to, we want to see deputies come to the island and stay. Correct. Um, and, and we haven't had a lot of, maybe we're having a little more success with that, but really not much. Right. Basically what's happened uh, since I've been here two and a half years and I saw a pattern prior to me getting here where they're getting deputies that have two or three years left in their career. They have 30, 33 years on, on the department. Well, what I've been doing is pulling younger deputies and not age, but younger on the department, less years on the department that they're still if you want to say they're very motivated and they they get out there and they do police work and they talk to the community and they go to meetings and they do all these things so when he's talking about getting a new deputy that's just another item instead of the city paying for five deputy positions they would pay for six deputy positions the one year or up to 18 months instead of the 250 251,000 it would be 208 is that what you said it'd be 208 and so that's it, inclusive of the uh, liability surcharge so I that's the uh, the total price so it wouldn't matter which deputy took that spot okay. it could be a deputy with one year on a deputy with 40 years on that would be up to myself who goes in that spot and when I determine who goes into these positions I pick the best person on a number of things are they proactive do they not call in sick all the time do they I mean I've all just like any business right you try to pick the best employee you can and that's what I do yes being on an island that does drop our, our pool down because some people you know I, make a long story short I had one uh, deputy that I knew was outstanding and he has three children and two of them are autistic he can't come to this island and be away from his three kids when his wife's taking him to meetings and doctor's appointments that's just not gonna work for his life mm -hmm. and I need to go with somebody else so I go with somebody like Adam and now Adam outstanding deputy does a great job he's always here community likes him uh, mm -hmm. it's so it doesn't matter the actual pos uh, the deputy that's filling that position right. it's just the funding for adding another deputy yeah. that's the difference I, yeah, I understand. Mm -hmm. okay great and Matt what do you want to say yes <laughs> Yes, a, a little history on, on the uh, growth uh, regarding the, uh, our deputies here on the island. The last growth was back in 2005, fiscal year 2005-2006. That's when the uh, service level increased from four and a half deputies to five deputies. So that equates to about 894 patrol hours. That was the last growth that, that we, saw, we saw on the island. Oh, okay. 2005-2006 you know, fiscal year. Okay. Okay, does anybody have any questions for us? Council? Community? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Happy Fourth. Oh, I see. I mean, I mean, I hate to have them wait on that. Oh, yeah. No. Well, do you have questions on their contract? Uh, not anymore. Yeah. Okay, then we're good. Okay. Excellent. Okay, we'll go back to department. Yes, and here's JJ. Good evening, Council. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Welcome to the gang. <laughs> um, the Harbor Department, as you um, guys, I'm sure, seen it today or have watched the Channel 4 News, they had a beautiful picture of Avalon Harbor with a lot of boats, <laughs> and it's not even the fourth yet. So we expect it to be a, a full on uh, crazy weekend. Um, as Bob said, um, the fuel dock uh, will be open tomorrow. Um, they had a, got it all set up today and they had to change prices. <laughs> so that's a little bit uh, labor intensive to do that. But so it'll be, um, it might have been up and running a little bit this afternoon, but tomorrow it'll be, um, it'll be going strong. So uh, there's no woohoo for that. 
Whoop, whoop. It's yeah, been waiting a few years. It's been a long... You wouldn't have said prices going up at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yeah, who? <laughs> well, it, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, <laughs> it's just uh, um, to make the hurt a little bit less. Um, since last council meeting, um, we've had uh, uh, over 952 boats arrive and stay. And compared to that same time uh, last year, um, uh, we're 44 boats ahead at 908 night boats. So a lot can be involved in that. It could be the weather. It could be where 4th of July has fallen and stuff like that. So it, uh, um, it's, we're busy. It, things have started off uh, gangbusters. We've had um, several medical calls um, on the boats out there. Uh, we've had, uh, unfortunately, a young lady was holding onto a rope and they're, they, uh, her husband wrapped up the, the boat and ripped her finger pretty good. So that was a, that was a pretty big bummer of the weekend. Um, we had a boat fire this morning um, on a, a boat out in West Harbor, and um, it, it, it was their halon system went off and it, um, put the fire out, but it still had smoldering life jackets. We called uh, Baywatch County Fire. There, um, they came down and boarded the boat and um, took care of all that stuff. So it's just like another another way of showing the intercooperation between the different departments. Um, Last week, I had a meeting with Michael Thomas, our on-call engineer, and we just uh, talked about the uh, Express with uh, Greg Bombard and shutting down. Greg has informed me that on these um, ships, on the, cat, the Jet Cat and Starship, they have four engines, and they've been trying to shut down two of the four engines, putting one engine uh, in neutral, or one of the jet, two of the jets in neutral. And uh, it seems to be working pretty well. The, the current has slowed down tremendously, although we're still, you know, working on uh, putting in that tie system to where they can put them all in neutral. Um, so we're moving on that one. And, and we um, also talked about the, uh, the um, dinghy dock uh, pier between the clubs. That's on its, on its way uh, last leg here. So we plan on moving that um, this winter. And so he's um, drawn up... Uh, uh, engineering and um, scope of work for that project and also out at the uh, ding at the uh, um, fuel dock the H frames to raise and lower the ramps due to um, the weather and stuff we met with him on that and our personnel and so we're getting some drawings for that done um, I, um, I thank you for your email today. I, I, I got it. It was a little late. It I was late. I apologize. Oh, okay, <laughs> no problem. I just was I didn't, wasn't able to get back to you on that. But hopefully by the uh, end of next week, um, I can get back to you on that. It's okay. just this week with. Um, I started that at 11 a.m. and it, <laughs> oh. it took that long to actually <laughs> finish focus and done. So no problem. Yeah, not a problem. I just wanted you to know that I got okay. it and I appreciate it. And uh, we can um, be more than happy to sit down and talk about it. And I'll get you the information that you, you requested. Perfect. Thank you. And as far as that, that's about, that's about it in the Harper Department. I'm sure there's a lot more, but I mean, we could be here all day. So um, unless you have a question. Um, Council Any questions? It. Okay. All right, Thank great. You. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City staff. Uh, at the last council meeting, you gave me very strict instructions to bring Christian Cisneros with me <laughs> and uh, introduce him. Christian's our newest entry level full time firefighter. He's got about two weeks on the job with us now. He's doing a terrific job, just like he did when he was in code enforcement. Uh, he's already begun the process of his uh, academy that starts with an online portion, and then he'll go away uh, for a few weeks and do some hands-on portions in Texas. So we're very excited to have Christian on the job, very proud to have him on the job with us. Okay. We've begun to make preparations for 4th of July. We're leaning forward for that, not only with the parade portion on the public safety side, but the, uh, the actual parade portion. We've got those things in place. And uh, it's not a fire department issue per se, but I just wanted to remind people that when they put their flags out and their flags get worn and tattered and faded, uh, that when they retire those, they can surrender them to the fire department or the VFW. Please don't throw them in the trash. Uh, with that, if you have any questions for me, 
Um, pretty good. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you. you, and congratulations to Councilmember Hayes. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Um, I don't have anything new to report except the mitigated negative declaration for the city's Five Corners project is, is officially out for public review over the next 30 days. So if anyone wants to review that project that they have not been able to be here for our council meetings, it is on the city website. And that's the only thing I had to announce unless you have questions for me. No, thank you. Matt Baker, finance director. Uh, the only update I have is we recently received a draft of the partner reviewed CAFR for the 18 financials. This week, uh, I've been working on the management discussion and analysis section, so that's going to be slightly new from prior audits. It's going to hopefully provide some clarity as to how to read the financials, as well as some high-level overview of the, the numbers themselves. So I'm working on that this week, so I'm hopeful to uh, have everything finalized sometime next week and something to present to Council either uh, late, Jan late July or early August for that. Um, other than that, we're working on closing out the fiscal year 19 and opening 20, but are there any other questions? Questions? Okay, thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. Um, before I do this, I need you to partake with me with your uh, 4th of July garb that you have on your dais, please. We'll practice our wave for Thursday. I wanted blue. I don't know that I can read my notes. You want blue? We can trade you out. We can oh trade you out. Sure. There we go. Uh, blue is a better color. And then uh, a little quiz. Uh, our parade theme. Anybody remember our parade theme this year? It's Making of the Magic Isle. Yesterday, to, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, celebrating 100 years of the Wrigley's on Catalina. So uh, we have a full day planned. It starts tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock on Wrigley stage with the USC marching band and their cheer team. Uh, so please, the community, come out and join us for that. 3 o'clock, Wrigley stage. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's about an hour, uh, an hour event there. Um, then we roll into Thursday's activities with the judging of the carts at Des on Descanso, Lower Descanso. Uh, that's at 10 o'clock to about 11.30. Uh, parade lineup starts about 12 o'clock. Uh, 1 o'clock the parade starts. Uh, parade is about an hour to an hour and a half. Um, thrilled to have um, our state representative, uh, Alan Lowenthal, with us. Um, he'll be joining us on the parade route, as well as our grand marshals this year, Allison Rusak and Blanny uh, Hagenau. So uh, really, uh, really thrilled about that. Uh, we have music uh, right there after the uh, parade uh, at the fuel dock, the old fuel dock location. Um, that'll start about 2.30, uh, barbecue starting about uh, noon there to about 5, uh, music from 2.30 to about 5, uh, and then the music will start back up on Wrigley stage um, about 4.30 up until um, the start of the fireworks show at 9 o'clock, and then we'll have some music come on uh, there after the fireworks show for half hour, 45 minutes, uh, up until about 10 o'clock. So full day of activities uh, starting tomorrow. Um, love to have the community come out. And the other, only other update I have, um, we have reached out to all our sidewalk vendors. We started with a list of 25. We had some duplicates that got pared down to 21. We've gone through that list. They've all been contacted about the lottery. Now the ordinance uh, goes into effect on the 4th and the resolution being passed at last meeting. So we're down to about 13, I think, that we'll have involved in the lottery. Um, and it's uh, eight of them are low income, five uh, non-low income. It's an eight to five split between food and merchandise. Uh, and we're gonna have our lottery here and lottery drawing here in council chambers on Tuesday the 9th at 4.30. Uh, so they've all been contacted on that. And uh, from there, we'll get our six vendors and start this program. 
And let me ask a question. Was there any progress made on the commissary concept? Um, there is some. I think we still need to do some, some tag teaming on it. Um, it may come down to kind of who's involved um, as part of that, but um, I think we'll, we'll have a little more serious sit down after um, the lottery and see if we can and move that forward. And we're, we're looking at one al alternative location as well. Did, well that was a lot of work. did the lottery happen today? Uh, I was just going to announce it today, so announce it. It's going to be next Tuesday, the 9th at 4.30 here in Council Chambers. Okay. Yeah. Great. That was a lot of work. I'm Do we sure. need to be here? Dan, yeah. what happened to the Yellow Pyramid? The Yellow Pyramid. Uh, the slope. Yeah. Um, so we have a couple pieces. Um, the hurdles came out. So we're talking about the inflatables in the bay, I think. Yeah. Um, the uh, hurdles came out. We had some seam issues. Um, it was under warranty. We just received it. Those should go back in the water tomorrow. Uh, and we're hoping we'll have the slope go back in tomorrow. We've got a... Um, a nagging little hole that we haven't been able to plug, um, but we're hoping that we got it today and they'll both go into wa water tomorrow. We have four grandkids over here right now. They'll be happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah. uh, any other questions? <laughs> yes, come on up, Leslie. Come up to the podium. Last year, the chairs went out on July 3rd along Front Street. As you recall, July 3rd night, there was no place to sit anywhere. So I'm just curious how we're handling that this year so that people that want to put chairs down maybe early in the morning, July 4th, or how is it going to work? I would love to know. So I think we're, we're hoping we have a better hand on this year. Uh, some signers will go out tomorrow saying that 7 o'clock will be the time. Uh, we needed the time in the morning. Not only is it hard for those coming in, it's hard for the crew to come in that morning to make a sweep of the place and uh, rope things off when we have. So signers will go out tomorrow stating that it's uh, 7 o'clock uh, and things will be moved if uh, they're out there, there earlier. That was a good question. And also I want to say I um, there was... I came up on Sunday, I guess. We had the music in the park, and it was the, the ethnic music and the rock and roll, and it, I, it seemed very well received. A little more PR, though, but it was, it was very, I could hear it from my house, and that's why I, we, got to, we came up. And uh, anyway, it was enjoyable. The bands were good. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Uh, Mike Palmer, Assistant City Manager. Uh, I just wanted to quickly uh, highlight something that's on a consent calendar. There is item number five is a request for a contract extension to Montrose Water and Sustainability Services, Inc. And this request is just to extend out the existing contract for a period of 62 days, ending on August 30th while we're uh, in the midst of contract negotiations. So city staff is currently working with uh, Montrose staff and legal counsel to renegotiate Negotiate some of the terms, particularly on price, and then streamline some of the processes that we had under the existing five-year contract. So we needed a little bit more time. There's no change in any of the costs associated with that, um, but I just wanted to highlight that. So I'm available for any questions. Right. That's kind of a nice thing. So then maybe if we had one question, it could be answered. We wouldn't have to pull it. You know. So that that was that was good, Michael. And also, I, want to, I appreciate the updates that you sent us, and, and, and Bob reiterated them, but you sent us the Public Works update with the things that he mentioned, and that was nice to see that as well, and I'll get the same information, so thank you. Okay, any, do we have any other department heads? Okay, we will go with City Manager Report. Yes. We have a new uh, code enforcement officer, uh, Efrain Moreno, who started with us. Uh, he's just completed day two, and so we're looking forward to working with him. He's in the process of being trained, so it's a great week for a lot of training. And I just want to say what a pleasure it is to have you back at the dais, Steve, and I look forward to you being my boss again. Thank you. There's <laughs> only one of five. <laughs> so what? It's a boss. I have five of them. <laughs> okay. Uh, council member report. Do you, Go ahead. Oh, no. I'll start us off okay. for a change. Okay. Um, let's see. The Gateway Cities Council of Government had their retreat here on the island two weeks ago um, to a great success. Topics included everything from public-private partnerships, housing and public works discussion, as well as stormwater reporting. 
Um, very well attended and looking forward to a hopeful retreat again here next year. Um, I think everybody had a wonderful weekend. Um, so thanks to all of them who came to enjoy the island and thank you to city staff including Denise, Michael Palmer who was there from moment of beginning to moment of end. Um, Amanda came to a session. So thank you very much for your guys' participation as well. Um, at the Gateway Council meeting last Wednesday night, I was nominated and successfully voted to hold the position this year as second vice president, moving to first and then to president of the board of the COG over the next couple years. Um, I am deeply honored and looking forward to the many, many doors that this has already opened for the city of Avalon and to our community, but also so much more. So um, thank you to the COG as well and for their vote of confidence. Um, Congratulations. Thank you. Really good for the city. Um, I will, I'm sure with others, be meeting with Congressman Lowenthal this week. Uh, my main topics uh, being some of the crises that we're experiencing at the school and looking for some next steps and some support. And additionally, um, I'm going back to my initial initiation from five years ago that I've kind of let go by the wayside that of working on our um, the federal rail system ending in Catalina rather than ending in the port of Long Beach. So I'm sure I'll have more updates as we go along, but it's been a project I really want to see through while I'm elected. And lastly, mostly just as an update for the community, um, for a year and a half, many members of the community, uh, parents have been diligently working towards bettering the facilities and educational opportunities for students in Avalon K through 12 school, as well as attempting to work through a barrage of concerns. Um, the current state of the school facility itself, educational opportunities for all, and disciplinary and safety concerns have reached an all-time high. Uh, members of the community have reached out to the school board member John Meyer and will be attending all school board meetings going forward. Superintendent Steinhauser, will be meeting with members of the community at the school auditorium on Wednesday, July 10th at 10 a.m. to address some of these concerns. There is also a petition being circulated around town to gain signatures to show support for the much needed changes at our school. Uh, a copy of the petition is here at City Hall. Uh, it is in English and there's a copy also in Spanish. Um, if anybody or any member of the community uh, would like to have their name added to the list of, of uh, participation, there's also an email address that was established in order to share information on particular uh, strands of concern for anyone who wants to be involved uh, rather than individual persons sending letters and emails. There's one email address now and it's apcac2019 at gmail.com and that information is also out there publicly as well. Um, you can also send your, your name to add you to the list and you can also request of that email uh, to receive a letter that's already gone to the school board. So what time is that again? 10 a.m. on Wednesday, July 10th at the school auditorium. Uh, Ted Abedaka from the newspaper is going to be here. He'll be, he, he so will be there, okay. he, he will join in. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, and that's all that I have other than um, thank you for our weekly public works update. Bob, I know you're instrumental in getting us that and Michael sending it out. So thank you very much for, um, for that. That's been very helpful to kind of di digest that information. And other than that, looking forward to what REC has for us coming up the next couple of days. <laughs> I have nothing as flowery as the council member does, but I uh, did get to attend on Monday the 50th anniversary of council member Joe Boscanianos, who's the council member from San Pedro, mm -hmm. LA City Council. And his parents were out there. There's about 40 people. It was a nice little event out there. Sorry, Cindy couldn't do it because she's in the big city. but And that's all I have. Steve. Well, I've only been here for 30 minutes. I don't have that's a lot to report, but I have a little boy. statement. I would like to report already. Wait, time for yes. Um, so I'd just like to thank our mayor and the members of the City Council for making the decision to appoint me to the seat of City Council due to the sad and sudden passing of Councilwoman Pamela Albers. As a former candidate receiving the second highest number of votes I, in last election, I'm honored to serve this community which I have called home for 53 years. 
I am ready to serve and partner with all the community. I pledge to work collaboratively, civilly, collectively, um, with dignity and professionalism with all the members of the City Council and stakeholders in our town. I truly believe that we can be effective partners in progress to work together to implement solutions to many critical programs and projects that are in, in place as we go forward. The quality of life and economic sustainability on our island is very important. To my family yeah, that's here tonight and the community that has supported me, I thank you. I would just uh, shout out to thank all the city employees and the close friends of, of Pam's who had a beautiful celebration for her last week. It was absolutely incredible. Thank you very much. Um, and do, I guess when we get these water quality reports, we do, they're posted on our website because we got really good ratings mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess everybody's to thank for that from the from the kid on the beach to the birds flying over the water to everybody. So it's a, I know it's a big, yes. So, uh, so that's awesome. That's so we sure wouldn't want to be closed down on the 4th of July. Would we? <laughs> anyway, that's all I have. Okay, oral communications. This is an opportunity for people in the community to speak on items that are not on the agenda. You will be limited to three minutes and no action will be taken. Paula Patterson, 221 Whitley. Um, I just wanted to add on to what you said on behalf of all the friends, family, and community that came. I want to thank the administration and the city workers for all their support and help. And I, we couldn't have done it without them. And it, they were incredible. I also want to put a special shout out to Devin Hart, who was so professional, so organized so willing to do anything and how much we appreciated her participation in making this all happen. So thank you. Great, thank, thank you. you. Anything? Oh, here yeah, comes Jim. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Jim Luchahan, Catalina Island Chamber of Commerce and Visitors Bureau. I'm just going to add a, a little bit to a couple of other reports that have already been stated here. Uh, one of the promises we make each year is that the businesses who support the annual Fourth of July celebration will be acknowledged at a council meeting. So um, to formally do so, I would like to call out Toyon Grill, Blue Water Avalon, El Galleon, the Avalon Hotel, Catalina Express, Southern California Edison, Catalina Island Golf Carts, Lloyds of Avalon, Avalon Freight Services, Island Threads, Hotel Metropole, Island Express Helicopters, and I need my glasses for the last couple, Brown's Bikes, Catalina Island Vacation Rentals, slash um, Catalina Island Real Estate, Luau Larry's, Eric's on the Pier, and Mountain and Sea Adventures, and then just last minute, just before I walked in, they told me as I was leaving the office that both Leo's and Catalina um, Cat Beverage have joined in the uh, sponsorship as well. So um, we may not get those last two logos up in all the places the others are, but we're going to do our best to acknowledge them otherwise. And um, individuals who are interested in, in helping support all of the expensive events that go on over the 4th of July can look for donation canisters around town or stop by either the pier, visitor center, or the offices upstairs over the bank. We'll gladly take any individual donations as well. Um, we are continuing moving forward on soliciting resident and business um, sentiment survey input. And as of about noon today, we had received 220 resident responses and 78 business responses. So I'm going to get on my members to get on those business responses. Um, I know everyone's pedaling as fast as they can with Fourth of July week, so that's part of it. We had heard from a couple of our business owners that they had individual staff members who did not have home computers and who wanted to participate in the survey. So we've worked with Paul at the library to set up um, a place where we have hard copies of each version of the survey, uh, Spanish and English, resident and business. They're color coded for easy identification. And we also have placed their self-addressed and prepaid postage envelopes to send the completed surveys directly to the survey company. So they're not at risk of being touched or altered or lost by anybody here. There's a drop box there if someone wants, or they're welcome to carry those directly to the post office. We do have an addition. 
so okay. I'll be really quick. We do have an addition on the written surveys that requires a, a signature. It will still be anonymous, just stating that you're not duplicating by doing an online survey and a manual survey as well. And um, just a reminder real quick, since I'm over my time limit, um, we're still looking for nominations for Business of the Year, and the form to do that can be found on our website, and we need those nominations by end of business July 5th. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Avalon Library. I did want to say that as soon as he set his box up, I did have to stop about 10 seven-year-olds from trying to stuff the box. <laughs> so uh, if, if the results skew a little young now, that may be an issue. Uh, I'm very pleased to report that our library is getting a lot of use during the summertime. Even though we're in this tiny shoebox, uh, people are coming in. Our statistics are actually quite comparable to where we were last year in the big library. And I'm really very surprised at that. But I, we're here. We're uh, giving out our, our movies. We've got lots of movies. We've got lots of books. People are coming in. Our visitors are making use of our Wi-Fi. It's really very nice. Um, lots of folks. Uh, we have a lot of programs going on. July 4th week, we're going to be pretty slow, frankly, because there's so much other stuff going on. Uh, I am going to pull out a bunch of crafts from my closet. Uh, it looks like old crafts to me, but to the kids, it's going to be a fun stravaganza. Uh, that's tomorrow at 3.30. Um, I also wanted to remind uh, everybody that uh, our friends of Avalon Library are once again hosting their ukulele class. That takes place every Wednesday at 4 p.m. at People's Park. Is that correct? People's Park? Uh, 4 o'clock. It's a lot of fun. Uh, Allison ordered some new ukuleles, so I have plenty to give out. So if you have a hankering to uh, do 20 to 26 miles next time, please join us. Uh, our summer discovery program is continuing. Please come on in, join us. I've got free children's books to give away to your kids. Reading over the summer is a genius thing to do. Keep our brains sharp. Um, as far as programs coming up, like the the I show, showcases, uh, I've got Wacko the Magician coming back on the 13th. He was we were he did a very popular show last year. He's really funny, so I invited him back on the 13th. Uh, I've got Artie Loon, who's a fabulous juggler. He's coming on the 27th. Um, Chuck Liddell next Tuesday. Uh, he's going to host an Avalon trivia bingo game. Uh, I think that's going to be amazing. We're going to play bingo. Uh, every time somebody gets a little, you know, BE4, uh, they have to answer a question, a trivia question, before they can put it on the, on the sheet of paper. And then I'll have some prizes to give out. That's going to be terrific. Um, he's, uh, Chuck, a week after, is also going to be doing his monthly history talk, which is turning out to be really popular, not only with locals, but also visitors. So we always have some visitors from the cruise ships on the Tuesdays. So that's a lovely thing, too. Um, let's see, crafts coming up on the 10th. Uh, I have um, make and decorate your own Walk of Fame Starbucks on the 10th, uh, accordion bookmaking on the 24th, uh, an outer space talk on the 25th. Lots of stuff. Our Spanish uh, English circle uh, is continuing. Uh, it's becoming very popular. We had 10 people uh, on Monday. Uh, well, last week, I should say. Uh, so we're, we're doing a lot of stuff. Please come by your library. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Yes, sir. How's the remodel doing? Uh, it's coming along. I, I, took my, I poked my head in. I'm very pleased. Uh, the date I have is fall. I don't know much more than that, but I'll take it. Yeah. Yeah. At least it's not fall 2022. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, now we'll get to the consent calendar. We have five items this evening on the consent calendar. The first one is actions from the June 18, 2019 regular city council meeting. And for the record, council member Hayes will be abstaining from that item. Number two is the total disbursement on the warrants of $1,851,250.80. Number three is to adopt a resolution notifying the Los Angeles County Board of Supervisors of the city's desire to receive specified law enforcement Services from the Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office authorizing the expenditure of COPS grants fund and to authorize the city manager to execute the city council, or excuse me, the city county municipal law enforcement services agreement for fiscal year 1920. 
Number four is to adopt a resolution approving the annual GAM appropriations limit calculation for fiscal year 1920. And the last one on consent is to authorize a 62-day extension on the agreement made between Montrose Water and Sustainability Services, which we all know as Environ Strategies, and the City of Avalon with no increase in the overall contract amount. Okay. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve items one through five. Second. Okay. Further discussion? Call for the vote. All ayes. The next thing is general business, and the first item for uh, discussion, our appointment this evening, is the audit committee, and we have one vacant um, seat right now. Council Member Hernandez, Hernandez is one of the um, persons that signs our warrants, and so I need one more um, volunteer. Well, Council Member Heights. I'll second that. I'll third that. Okay. Does he take it? <laughs> Railroads live. <laughs> Yeah. All eyes. And number seven is just to formally appoint a council member Stephen Hayes to, to serve on the Avalon Hospital Board of Trustees with you. So moved. Oh, seconded. All eyes. Number eight is the continuation of the Council Ad Hoc Committee for a period of six months to participate in discussions and meetings regarding the proposals from Southern California Edison to increase the water rates and related tariffs and advice letter matters. That was just for a certain period of time and we're asking to extend that. Um, and I believe, uh, Mayor, when that very first meeting, uh, Oli showed up, Pam showed up, and you showed up, and you graciously stepped out of it, so that's why I recommend you to step back in at this time. So that's just my recommendation. It's whatever the council determines. I, I know Cindy hit me up because she would like to sit on that. Um, so if, I mean, I would like to continue, but if she really wants to, I, I'll, I'll step, step aside. I would really like to continue with that. So moved. Okay. So she Second. nominated herself? Okay. <laughs> Winded herself and you seconded it? Okay. okay. I guess if that's not a good So it doesn't that. matter as long as <laughs> as long as I'm involved. That's that's my um, main point of, is there is it appropriate to have an alternate? Mm. In the case. Okay. So I'd like to appoint uh, move to appoint the mayor as the alternate in case one of us can't attend. Okay. Love it. Okay. Okay. Is that a motion? That's too? a motion. That's and a second? Yeah, that's a good. Okay. Did you get all that, Gabby? <laughs> Call for the vote. So that was Cindy making the motion, Oli amending the motion, and mm -hmm. all eyes. All eyes. This one is to formally uh, establish the ad hoc committee for the homeless. That was you. I was on the next one. The mayor and. Um, no. Councilmember Albers were both on it, and at that time, anyway, we never formally did it as an ad hoc, so I would like to establish that as a, an ad hoc committee this time. I'd like to. For a period of 12 months. I would like to be on that for sure. I'll do that. I'll be okay. on that. I'll nominate Annie and Mayor Marshall and Councilmember Hayes. Second. All eyes. This is the quickest decisions we've ever made. Okay. <laughs> this one is the formation of a city council ad hoc committee for a period of 12 months to participate in discussions regarding the transient occupancy tax. This group had not met yet, so we're looking forward uh, to getting that group together like very soon, mm -hmm. um, only because we did promise when we adopted the budget that we would have a revenue generating uh, council meeting study session before the end of July and I'm getting ready to send out an email to see who is available for Thursday July 18th from 10 to 12 as our uh, first initial study so I'll send that email out to you tomorrow morning but I do need I'm s I believe uh, council member Albers and myself were originally yes. talking about it I am very much interested in continuing or beginning I might want to make a comment. I know that Councilman Hernandez has been interested in the TOT, and um, 
it might be interesting, interesting to, to get his perspective on that. Oh, it might be interesting to get Councilman Hernandez's perspective on the TOT. I don't even so know if he wants to, but, um, or could we maybe say him and then if he's not interested, have an alternate, kind of like you just did with me? Yeah. Okay. 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 And, and then, then the alternate. And, and, okay, and then uh, only the alternate. That's your motion, Mayor? Yes. Second. Call for the vote. All eyes. We have a close one closed session item this evening. It's public employee performance evaluation for the city manager. Okay, thank you. Uh, every, happy Fourth of July. Good night, Tony, and we'll see y'all later. <laughs> Good night, Tony. Did we already say good night to Tony?
We are back from closed session and there is no reportable action. Meeting adjourned. Good night, Tony. Bye, Tony. He's not going to be here for the fourth. Oh.